Stuart, I know you're you're very friendly with England manager Gareth Southgate. You speak to him, you speak to him a lot, mm. and speak to him, no doubt, about a bunch of things. I want to get your take on this, because, Simon, I know you bowl in, as you always do, with your own opinion on, on a matter like this. I have read this letter. Gareth Southgate decided to sit down and he's written a fairly lengthy letter, mm. which just starts, Dear England. So anyone who has any affection for England as a nation and a, a, as a footballing nation really wants to have a look at this. And he's, he's it made his intention clear in, in, in the timing of it, just prior to a ball being kicked in the Euros, how he grew up being an England fan and what it's all about for him. Every game, no matter the opposition, has the potential to create a lifelong memory for an England fan somewhere. Why do we care so much? And he goes on to say, it's all about pride. I mean, Stuart, first off, is this a good thing that he's done? And secondly, do you share his sentiment? Um, I think it's refreshing. The, the, the biggest criticism that football has is it's our national sport has gone away from the fans. When I talk to people over on the Tube or wherever it may be, they say, oh, the game's gone away from us. They don't care about the fans. They don't care about this. I think it's quite refreshing that our national manager's prepared to sort of open his heart a little bit on various topics. I'm very, very biased in favour of him. I'm quite proud, actually, that he is the head of our national game. I think he conducts himself in a brilliant way. I think he talks honestly and openly. I don't think he's a bullshitter. I really don't, as a person. He's certainly not that. And... What he's done that's been good for the team, we've got to a semi-final in the last World Cup. The media-fan relationship is fantastic with England. It's the best it's ever been. Now, it doesn't say a lot about what's gone before, but it's yeah. the it's the best yeah. it's ever been, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, he's enhanced a lot of young players and give them the opportunity to, to break into the national setup. They got to the National League for Nations League final as well. So he's done a lot of good in the time that he's been. He's been involved with the 21s as well. So he n understands the system with England and bringing players through and mm. what it's like to do so. So for me, it's fantastically refreshing that he's done that. And it just shows him for what he is. I mean, I know him on a personal level, as, as, as we all do probably. And the letter is very honest. I don't read the letter and think to myself, oh, there's someone tried to bullshit the public yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Here. Exactly. It's not that. He doesn't do that. He's, ma he's making points, I think, Stuart, that w we all think, but maybe we don't say. I mean, Simon is saying, undoubtedly, we're in a different era now, as Stuart touched upon. Footballers aren't as accessible to fans yep. as they once were. They don't ride in the same bus home from games or meet yep. in a pub for a pint <clears throat> in a post-match <clears throat> analysis. Yep. And I like what he says here. He says, I see players scrolling on their phones straight after the final whistle. Yep. And I think, hmm, is that a particularly good idea? Now, good for Southgate. He's like, he's saying what we think. Yeah, now listen, I don't think that I can disagree with the majority of what Stuart has said. I'm not in the Southgate camp that I believe he's an elite manager and that thus should have got the England manager job in the first place because I believe that it's the pinnacle of uh, an Englishman and the elite get the England, England manager's job. Once upon a time, someone he played for, Brian Clough, should have got the England manager's yeah, job. Yeah, but do you need to be elite? Uh, Capello well, well, I think did, I, I, didn't I, work out there, well, did I think, it? I think, well... Capello didn't work out for a variety of different reasons, right? But that doesn't disprove the theory that the best managers should be managing their national sides, in my view. But going to the central theme that we're talking about, which is this correspondence, yeah, I think it's in it's kind of is synonymous with the manner in which he's conducted himself over the last four years. He's brought a different feel and a different flavour. He's come from within the confines of the FA, so he's not a challenge to the FA. He's not somebody that they have particularly have to manage or worry about how he's going to interface with the media. He interfaces brilliantly because he is a product of his time. He was a very affable Decent footballer when he was at Palace, went on to Aston Villa, did well there, played for the England team, made the very best of his abilities. Um, and ultimately, the way he operates within the confines of the job that he does, he's a statesmanlike individual. He, 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 he speaks a language that people can relate to. For me, that's great. I think it's a great call to action to bring everybody together to, to, to harmonise things. Um, I think some of it is slightly misguided and, 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 and slightly... Um, 
uh, focused on how players are because some of them aren't that way. Some of their behaviour over the last 12 months, whether it's been Jack Grealish breaking COVID rules, whether it's the players going away to Iceland, does need to be looked at in a certain way. And you can't just brush it over as everyone's proud and the players are doubling down on their attitudes because sometimes they're not. But when you're writing a letter on the eve of a tournament, a mm. tournament that's being played at home, when you're trying to call upon people, you're not going to look back on things that are, that, that are not positive. I think there's nothing about that letter really that could be deemed as something you'd want to ridicule or something that doesn't uh, uh, call people to action. Yeah. I, think, I think it's a decent thing to do. I think what he done in the letter as well, he outlined that the, the players do actually care. There's a perception at times that, that players don't actually care about playing for their countries or playing for their clubs or, or one thing and another. And there's a misconception as well of players in my era, everyone cared about everything. There was players in my era that didn't turn up for England unless they were going to get played. That, that's a fact. You they, know what they, I mean? they wouldn't turn up unless they knew they were going to start. Exactly. You're telling me that certain players in yesteryear, everyone was passionate to play for their country and today, not as much as yesteryear. I won't have that. You know, we look back with rose-tinted glasses, make no mistake about that. It's like you sitting here telling me I was a decent player. I was a trier. End of. Rose-tinted glasses is a perception of 30, 40, of 50 years ago. These players now, I'm not sure I'd like to be a player in modern-day football now with the scrutiny these boys are under and the exposure to social media and everything that goes with it. So I look at look at players, I work with them firsthand on a daily basis, and mm. you think it's not easy being a modern-day professional footballer. You've got the money and you've got the bits and pieces, the fluffy stuff that go with it, which is brilliant. But you've also got the yin and yang. The other side of that is the as scrutiny. Well. It's a scrutiny. Yeah. It's not easy to deal with. Yeah. Um, having said all that, Simon doesn't think Southgate, am I right, is an elite manager. <clears throat> no, I don't. No. Presumably you do, Stuart. You tell me what an elite manager is. Is an elite manager that's delivered results for the national team. He's got as far in a World Cup as Bobby Robson and Alf Ramsey. Very true. That's factual. Well, well, no, because Alf Ramsey won the World Cup. Yeah. But, 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 but with the greatest respect, Stuart, if you're playing teams that you should beat, right, which is England, and this, 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 you talk about looking back with rose tinted glasses. Mm. Then look at the 2018 World Cup with rose tinted glasses, because the fact of the matter is, we beat everybody that we should beat and lost to people that perhaps we shouldn't beat. And the, the object of the aim is to be able to overcome obstacles. In the semi-final of the World Cup, we had an opportunity to beat a side that were marginally better than us, but we had control of that game. And because the manager didn't know what to do next, a stick or twist with, with certain players, we were outmaneuvered by the, Cro Cro the Croatians in the second half of the World Cup and lost two, to two teams that, on paper perhaps we would struggle to beat and beat the Colombians that were decimated, beat the Swedes that were, were average, beat the Panamanians. Wow. And now we're trading off that. Mm. Now, I'm less interested in a wonderful balanced letter that en engages the nation and more interested in how he'll perform in this tournament because that's what we'll judge him by because that's the job he's taken on. And all the, the, the lovely sensitivity of interfacing with the media, having the dartboard, making sure the players understand their responsibilities falls by the wayside if they do not succeed in this tournament. And succeeding this, in this tournament has to be, A, obviously getting out of the group stages, and B, going very deep into the tournament. That's the harsh reality of it, Stuart, is it not? It's, that is the harsh reality of it. it. Listen, you don't have to convince someone who's spent 40 years in football that the, the most important thing is when the whistle goes yep. and you've got to galvanise a result on a Saturday, a Wednesday, whenever it may be. And I totally agree in regard to that. Gareth, once again, as you always are as an England manager, you'll get judged on results yep. and performances. And listen, come Sunday, we'll know a bit more. Yeah. It's fair to say. But I think, I don't see anything wrong with that letter is what I'm saying. No, of course I think not. it shows no. a human side of him yeah. that exposes himself, not to mm. us who are in, in and around the game, but for people that, in the street that are football fans. Yeah, and there's a message for the people who might boo at the taking of the knee. Why would you choose to insult somebody for something as ridiculous as the colour of their skin, he says? Why? Unfortunately for those people that engage in that kind of behaviour, I have some bad news. You're on the losing side. Yeah, he's being very protective towards his squad with this. You know, you read between the lines in some of the bits he's put out there, and for me, he's being protective towards his squad, and so should every manager. Well said, Stuart. I like it. It's Jim White, Simon Jordan and Stuart Pearce. We're live this morning on TalkSport. Jim White.
and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.